Hi everyone and welcome to my first video on generative art in Elm. We're going to be recreating something of a recreation. Uh, and first off I'll need to thank uh, Alexander Miller for making this video. And if you want to see how it's done in processing, you can just come take a look at his video. But these familiar flying lines that uh, we've all seen at some point in our lives. Um, but we're going to be doing this in L. So let me pause that. And uh, first thing you'll need to do is to clone my project out of GitLab. So let's do that now. And when you get it, it's going to be in a complete state. So you'll see it with the lines moving around. But I'm going to be doing this uh, uh, from scratch. Uh, all you're going to have to worry about is, is working here in the draw frame area. And this is kind of hides all of the work that's going on in SVG. All the graphics that are, are being drawn will be through SVG, but we're not going to be working with that directly. We'll be using what I've written here in shapes.elm. And you can take a look at that. That's part of the project, um, drawing circles and rects and lines. And again, uh, we're going to hide that. And we're also kind of hiding the Elm architecture. So draw frame is getting drawn every 60 of a second. We're not actually link syncing with the animation frames. That's a future enhancement uh, we'll add. Uh, we simply draw one frame each time and we're going to draw a circle. We're going to get an X and a Y from these functions. And obviously it's just returning zero right now. It has a radius of one. Um, color red. Uh, we'll ignore these two empty lists for now. They will allow you to uh, pass in attributes and children shapes as well, but uh, we won't be doing that here. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Uh, and so we'll want to start up Elm Live. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Hold on a moment. And there we are. We draw a red circle right in the middle. Notice that that's not one pixel, that's one unit. Um, I am, even though the view area is larger than this, I've set this up to use coordinates of negative uh, 50 to positive 50, negative um, 50 Y to uh, positive 50 at the bottom. So it's 100 wide, 100 tall. Uh, with zero, 0, being at the center. Um, I have the, the grid showing right now. That, that's going to be there as a reference for us while we're working on this. So, pretty exciting, huh? We drew a red dot. Woohoo! Okay, so let's do something a little more interesting. Let's make that red dot move. And, of course, to animate, all we need to do is change our X and Y over each frame. The argument that comes into draw frame is the frame number and we're going to use that as time that's going to be close enough for our purposes um, there are ways to be more precise in elm with uh, animation timing um, we're not going to be doing that here um, so so each time this comes in it's going to that's going to come in as one and then two and then three and then four um, so let's just move x uh, to to be that so we should see this moving across the screen uh, down and to the right And there we go. We have animation on the screen. Next up, let's make it a little more interesting um, by changing this to be a uh, to move in a sine wave. 
So we're going to change the Y. And we're going to need to slow this down a little bit. So let's just divide by 10. Okay, so we see it's moving uh, in a sine wave there, but let's let's increment the uh, mag. Let's, let's increase the magnitude of this wave much more on the screen. And there we see it moving in a nice clean sine wave for 50 frames, and then starting back at zero. Let's let's start from the other edge. Let's see if this works. And just to make things a little more visible, let's change our draw frame to draw, draw many frames at once so that we can see the trail behind it. Notice that uh, drawing is just defined, it's an alias for an SVG message. Um, using drawing just to make our page a little easier to, to work with. Save that and see what happens. There we go. Let's make a circle out of it. And if we add the sine on one coordinate and the cosine on the other, we should wind up with a circle. So let's put our cosine and there we go. Now we're drawing our circle. We're heading toward drawing those lines. And what we want to do is have something a little more interesting than just a circle. So let's add another sine wave to the X coordinate. Let's increase the frequency here by 20 and change the amplitude down to something smaller. Let's see what this gives us. Oh, and let's make a longer trail again um, so we can see the full shape of what it's giving us. And you can just throw in any sort of numbers you want um, and just see what happens. There's something a little more interesting. Kind of creeps off the edges. I want to keep it inside our 100 by 100 play area. And come to think of it, it could be a little taller. So let's, and there we go. Okay, I think I'm going to just save these for a moment. Just rename those x, y, and x2. Um, because what we want to do is combine two different shapes and then draw lines between the two different shapes to get those, those fun flying lines. Let's go ahead and add a new set to our y coordinate. Change that to, co to cosine. Um, oh, there's an interesting pattern. I like that one. Um, that might be worth uh, that might be worth saving as well. Let me go ahead and do that. Oh, there's kind of a peculiar shape. That's good to play with. Let's let's go ahead and save this. What we're going to want to do is draw lines between x, y, and let's go ahead and rename these now. x, y, 1, and x, y, 2. Right now, let's just look at the two um, shapes superimposed on top of each other.
There we go. Okay, so we have two interesting shapes. So let's see what happens if we draw a line between them. Then we hopefully we'll have something that looks like our, our flying lines. Okay, there we go, came on a nice purple. And there are flying lines, very much like what Alexander showed us, uh, but then and now. And the one thing I don't like about this is that it repeats a lot. So let's make one more change um, to to one of the lines so that it's a little slower or a little faster than, than the other coordinates feeding in. Um, let me take a look at this. Okay, so it starts out the same, but it begins to vary a little bit more. And you won't have a repeating pattern for a very long time. And, and if you wanted to show the, the dots in there as well to see how that fits into the path, that sounds like fun. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. And there you see how it fits into this. And you can add the other lines as well. Uh, that was two. And I'm going to take this out now. And we'll see just the lines. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, play with the coefficients there to those functions to get other shapes. Change the colors over time. Put the Maybe have the colors tied to the frame. Put a background in that. Play with it. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And remember, always... Always think critically, demand evidence, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.